And a new book out today called What Universities Owe Democracy. Johns Hopkins University President Ron Daniels argues that with democracy in danger, universities must step up. We're joined now by Ron Daniels. I mean, quite, quite the controversial sort of statement, first and foremost. Dig into the democracy part. Why do you see it at a particularly fragile inflection point? Where do you see it at a fragile point? So at one level, if you just look at the statistics in terms of the slide of countries from democracy to authoritarianism, we've seen a significant degradation over the last uh, several years in terms of the number of countries that see themselves as democratic. That's at an international level. In terms of our domestic situation, if you just look at the level of polarization, the expressed distrust of that people have for people from the opposite political party, um, extremism, uh, concern about reliance on facts, all of these things, I think, not the core of our democracy. And they're serious and they require, I believe, the university to enhance the role that it plays in combating that. That's been the role of universities for years, if not decades, and probably centuries here. There has been some concern here that universities themselves aren't necessarily living up to that. That there is either, if not a stifling of the speech, at least not enough of an open door to allow enough speech and discourse. I'm wondering how you sort of combat that trend that what's happening in society almost by default is going to seep into your university in some form or another. So I think that this is where the university has a role to play in understanding that at the core we are about truth, fact, reason. And in order to be able to achieve those things, you need an environment in which contestation of ideas takes place, where people should be free to advocate uh, uh, with passion and hopefully with evidence in favor of the positions they hold. And you don't want to have a limiting effect on that kind of debate. But, but how do you do that in a large university setting? If you're a small liberal arts college or even on the opposite end of the spectrum and you have a fairly homogenous student body, if you will, and even a fairly homogenous faculty, it seems like it's easier to corral people. But when you have tens of thousands of students, all from different backgrounds, all from different ways of life, allowing that discourse to come from everyone, no matter how offensive some of those that discourse may be, how do you continue to allow that? So first and foremost, this is where I think it's important for leadership to make it clear. And I don't mean just presidents, I mean deans, uh, uh, chairs of, uh, of faculty departments, boards of trustees, we have to make it clear that the key role of the university is to have these debates. They're not unusual, that's natural and desirable. But more than that, just in the way you've described, with such an amazing diversity of people who are now enrolled in our institutions, representing different racial, religious groups, different socioeconomic groups, and different parts of the country, and indeed the world, that's the place where we want to find ways in which we can increase the likelihood of engagement across those differences. And hopefully, we can model a kind of environment where we can do better than the world around us, where there's just so much distrust and polarization. So how does this play into curriculum then as well? Not only what people are talking about outside of the classroom, but how you build this into classroom where so many students are frankly just worried about what jobs they're going to get coming out. So I think it starts right from the get-go, from the time that students enter into university. And here at Johns Hopkins this past year, we made it clear that the challenges of democracy are serious and that they are going to be called upon to be important uh, advocates for the democratic ideal. So we want the democratic education, that engagement to start right at the beginning. And how that happens, I think, is first and foremost uh, with uh, attending debates and events where they're not just in echo chambers with people who share the same ideas, but trying to find opportunities where they can see debates where there are positions, conservative and liberal, that are um, happening that are um, taking place in a way that they can see the possibilities of understanding an agreement that might uh, be uh, created across different political perspectives. Have we forgotten the art of debate? When I was at school, I was, uh, I was in a debate team where you, you took up positions that you didn't agree with. Mm. But it wasn't emotional. It was just the art of debating and putting a viewpoint across. Has that been forgotten? Is that still taught, that element that you have to pick up a, a baton that you don't believe in in some way and try and, in a rational way, describe it and fight for it? Well, I think, I think, I think we don't emphasize debate as much as we uh, have in the past. But I think more than that, what's really important is that we get students to come into environments where they have to think about 
what are the best and most generous ways in which you could argue for the position of someone you don't agree with and starting to again build the capacity to um, turn down the anger and the ad hominem attacks that we see all too frequently in America and try again to make use of this diversity that we have in our student bodies to build bridges of understanding. That's the exciting, that's the exciting opportunity that waits us now in the universities in this country.